Now, Ephesians began with this amazing declaration that in Christ Jesus, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. You remember that back in chapter 1, verse 3? In Christ, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. And because we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing, uh, living as a Christian person, uh, you know, li- living as a Christian man or, or woman, is not just the only way to live in this world, it is actually the best way to live. I mean, consider for a moment the message that we've been hearing uh, from this series. You see, God's power raised Jesus from the dead. And that same resurrection power has been applied to you and I. And so we also have been raised to God's new life. God has forgiven forgiven us all our sins as Jesus paid a penalty of our sins by dying in our place. So instead of being dead in our sins and our trespasses, instead of being slaves to the devil instead of being slaves to all kinds of sinful desires, having no hope and without God in the world, we now have been given a new life. A new life that is centred around Christ, who is at the heart of everything that God is doing in this world. The message of the book is loud and clear. That Jesus rose from the dead... And he now stands at the centre of God's plan and purpose in this whole universe. And God is rearranging the the universe and our life so that we will be centred around him. And this is the nature of the new life that we have in Christ. You know, um, we can't uh, enjoy God's new life by uh, remaining where we are thinking that everything else is revolving around us. Now, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and as our Saviour, as our Judge, what we are saying is, no, no, no. Now, I'm going to rearrange my life and I'm going to overturn the way of living and thinking and behaving and and relating to each other so that Jesus is now going to be the centre of everything that I do and say. And so Christians are those who listen to Jesus. Christians are those who trust what he says. We are the people who are seeking what his will is. We want to please him. We want to uh, uh, bring honour and glory to his name. And so uh, last week we are told that we are to be filled with the Spirit of God. Uh, It is a commandment, uh, it is a command that is followed by four explanation note that we we see towards the end of uh, chapter 5, beginning of verse um, uh, verse 18, do not get drunk with wine, for it is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. And then it tells us four things uh, as to how we might be living with the Spirit uh, filling our life. One, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Two, singing hymns and making melody in our, uh, uh, to the Lord with all our hearts. Three, giving thanks always and for everything to the God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And fourthly, finally, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. And so we now turn to the subject of submitting to one another as a a part and parcel of what it means to live this new life. Submitting to one another is one of the ways of experiencing the life that is filled with the Spirit of God. This is how we have Jesus at the centre of our life. Notice how, how, first and foremost... We are to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. The word there is actually not reverence, it's actually fear, right? We are to submit to one another out of fear for Christ. Now, Paul is not necessarily talking about terror or intimidation. You know, when, you're, when you stand, in, stand next to a big dog... Um, you're terrorised by his aggression and, and so on. 
the word fear is not that kind of fear, but it's more like standing in the presence of this awe-inspiring, universe-filling uh, Christ who's risen from the dead with all power and glory and majesty. And so as we stand in his presence, we are filled with, well, reverence. We are filled with awe. We are filled with our willingness to, to honour him and, and submit our life to him. It makes perfect sense, doesn't it? I mean, when we see the risen Lord Jesus standing at the centre of everything that God is doing in this world, what is the appropriate response that we can show? It is to fall down on our knee, bow down to him, acknowledging his authority over the entire universe and therefore over us. And that's why we call Jesus our Lord. You know, uh, when, when we see Christ with the resurrection power, insubordination to him is just out of question, isn't it? You know, uh, when we were not Christians, we were living our life the way we want to. We were uh, just following our sinful passions and desires, and, and as, as the, uh, Paul says in Ephesians, we were without hope, without God in this world. But as the gospel breaks into our hearts and we see the truth of the, the gospel of our Lord Jesus, we see for who he is, and we realise that he needs to stand at the centre of our life, and therefore we submit to him. It is the right and proper response. We trust his word. We want to see his name being acknowledged by other people as well. And so we fear him. And so we give due reverence to him. We listen to his word. And our rebel heart is broken down, it is transformed, and we want to submit our life to him. And as we submit to him, the Bible is encouraging us that we submit to appropriate authorities. Uh, it was a wonderful way to uh, introduce the whole idea of submission. Um, I mean, Ian mentioned something about how submission is normal part of our life. Uh, you know, we are to submit to the police we are submit to, to, uh, to traffic light. We are to submit to our teachers when we go to school. We are submit to uh, the, our employers. I mean, I was having a conversation with uh, the people who were sitting next to us. Uh, we submit all the time uh, in our workplaces, although people do not like the word submission. But that's what they do. Uh, submission is there is a leader, a person who needs to make the decision, and you follow uh, that person's decision. That's submission, isn't it? If there is no that kind of hierarchy in any human society, it'll we'll just end up with a total chaos. So submission is not a bad thing. It is a, a normal way of uh, us living in this world. But notice how uh, Paul speaks about the necessity of submission in Christian life. It is not just because it is a practical, it is a, a pragmatic uh, a reasonable way of thing that we, we organise our life. Notice the reason why we are to submit to one another. Out of reverence for Christ. It is a godly way of living. We do this because we want to please our risen Lord Jesus. It is a part and parcel of being a disciple, a follower of Christ... Now, of course, it doesn't mean uh, the Bible is condoning any abuse of, of our authority. We shall see in a moment how our authority is to be exercised. But for now, it is important to state as clearly as we can that in the Bible, submission is actually a good thing. Uh, it is contrary to uh, our nature, contrary to our uh, 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 sinful uh, instinct. It is contrary to what our society believes. You know, we live in a society where 
a person's value is determined by the function that he or she performs in a society. And so if the person is functioning uh, in a certain way, then the, the, the person's worth is valued. If the person is not functioning in a certain way, then we say, well, that person is useless in our society. It's kind of totally a tragic way of looking at our society. And so uh, you look at the idea of submission and say, well, that function is not worthy of me uh, because submission uh, sort of suggests inferiority uh, when we are living in a society where equality is, is everything, it is the kind of the greatest virtue in our society, the uh, idea of submission is so repugnant to a lot of us. But again, notice how submission is how we relate to Christ. It is not an odd thing to do, it is a natural thing to do for Christian people. We trust our Lord Jesus Christ. We submit to him because we know his way of life is actually the best way to live. So submission to him is an expression of our faith, our trust in his goodness. And we shall see in a moment that our submission to, uh, to sub, submitting to one another is no different uh, in, in that regard. Uh, before we move on to sort of few practical case studies uh, of husband and wife and uh, children and parents and, and slavery and, and master's thing, there is one thing that uh, I need to make very clear at this point. Notice how in verse 21 it says, submitting to one another our reverence for Christ. Submitting to one another does not mean reciprocal or mutual submission. It is very important uh, to, to point this out. Uh, uh, submitting to one another is, does not mean reciprocal or mutual uh, submission. Instead, it means submitting to appropriate authorities. So, children are to submit to their parents, not the other way around. Uh, slaves are to submit to their masters, not the other way around. It's not a reciprocal submission. And so when we come to submitting, the wives submitting to husband, it is without ambiguity that what Paul is saying here, or what Christ is saying through Paul, is that the wives are to submit to their husbands, not the other way around, or nor a reciprocal submission. Um, uh, people hate the idea of... Um, abuse in, in a marital relationship, and rightly so. And it is true that uh, in certain circles, Christian circles, uh, texts like this has been misused uh, to give a husband kind of uh, inappropriate uh, uh, means to, to, uh, to abuse their, their wives. It is true. But let's not throw the baby out of with the bathwater. What the scripture is saying is loud and clear. And, uh, husband, uh, husbands are to exercise their leadership in a certain way. And in response, wives are to submit to their husbands. So, uh, I think I'm going to be spending most of my time uh, looking at this submission idea in a marriage. Uh, there are a couple of other things that, that the passage mentions. I might just go on to delve into, into a children and parental relationship a little bit, but we may not have enough time to think about uh, slavery and, and master's relationship, but, but that's okay. We'll, we'll leave that for, for, for another time. So let's uh, spend some time uh, looking at uh, what Paul is saying in verses 22 onwards. All right, you ready for it? Let me just read it out here again. Wives, submit to your hus own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, his body, and he himself is saviour. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Firstly, notice how it is a willing submission from wives' part. 
Notice how he says here, uh, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. Do this as you are doing to the Lord. You know, uh, when we come to know our Lord Jesus Christ, we do this willingly. We do this out of our own initiative. We are not coerced into it. We are not forced into submission. When we confess our Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour, we are utterly convinced that he is indeed our Saviour and it is right and appropriate for us to submit to him. It is our own, out of our own willingness. And so, wives are to submit to their husbands out of their own willingness. They don't need to be coerced into it. Secondly, wives are submit to their husbands joyfully as church submits to Christ. You know, um, there is nothing more joyful than Christian people coming together, acknowledging the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and sing our hearts out, giving the praise uh, that is due to him. Why? Because we know he is our good Lord. We know that it is right and appropriate for us to express our thankful heart to him. We do this joyfully. And so, wives' submission to their husbands is a willing and joyful submission. Thirdly, notice the extent of this submission. Notice what he says here. Do this in everything. You see there in the end of verse uh, 24, submit in everything to their husband is the call. In other words, there should be no part in her life that should be outside her relationship to her husband. You know, it's, it's not like a uh, wife has many compartments in her life and you say, in this area, I'm going to listen to him. Uh, when it comes to raising our children, I'll listen to him. When it comes to, I don't know, the financial issues, I might listen to him. When it comes to uh, certain things, I might listen to him. But with these things, I'm going to do things my own way. No, it's not like that at all. What Paul is saying is, in everything, in every aspect of your life, trust your husband and submit to him. Uh, how we might um, practice uh, practice in, 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 in real life, uh, maybe I, I can make a few suggestions uh, uh, practically. Trust your husband as your leader. Trust your husband as your leader. Let him do his job. Give him space. No doubt he will make mistakes. But when he does make mistakes, rather than criticising him, especially in front of other people, make suggestions and help him to lead better. That's how you submit to him. It is not to, you know, uh, greet your teeth and, 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 and in the spirit of anger and, and frustration, you sort of say, I give up and you do whatever you want. Well, that's not really true submission we're talking about here, isn't it? It is a joyful, willing, happy submission in trust and love and respect. I know it is very difficult when your husband is doing a poor job. It is very, very difficult to, to trust him when he keeps on making mistakes. But call to submit your life to your husband is not conditional in this passage. Paul is not saying submit to your husband as long as he is doing a good job. He said, Paul just says submit to him in everything. Notice how uh, in, um, in other parts of the New Testament, for example, in, in 1 Peter and so on, wives are to submit even to their non-Christian husbands. Sometimes uh, we see the uh, situation where wives are, are converted and husbands uh, are not. 
and that brings all kinds of difficulty and challenge and tension in a marital relationship, uh, I strongly urge you that if you are not married yet, make sure that you marry a Christian person. You will regret later on. It is a terrible decision. So when you are not married, resolve in your heart to find someone who acknowledges Jesus as their Lord and Saviour so that your marriage will be enriched by common faith that the husband and wife share together. But times uh, we see a husband and wife uh, with a different faith. Uh, perhaps it's because um, wife uh, was also a non-Christian person but later on uh, heard the gospel and, and turned to Christ before her husband. That might be the situation. But if your husband is not a Christian person, then you are also to submit to him in everything. Now, in response, Paul goes on to speak to the husbands. So have a look at verse 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, and having cleansed, by her, uh, cleansed her by the washing of water uh, with, with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that he, uh, she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own, own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, <coughs> because just as Christ does to the church. Notice how the command here to the husbands is not beat your wives into submission. In other words, it is not your job to ask a submission from your wives. It's none of your business, so to speak, right? Do not demand submission from your wives. It is not your job. The command to submit has been given to the wives, so let them deal with that. Instead, your job as a husband is to love her, to cherish her, to care for her, to respect her, to put her first and make sure that she's taken care of. That is your responsibility. Do your job and let your wife do her job. The husband's responsibility is captured in that beautiful word, love. Love your wife. Stop hating her. Stop being mean to her. Stop being, being inconsiderate of her, but love her. Stop criticizing and blaming her. Rather, take care of her. Put her first and her needs before everything else. You see, if the spirit-filled life is a characteristic of Christian congregation, then one of the signs of the spirit-filled life is that husbands are loving their wives. Um, brothers, are you doing this? Those of you who are married, are you loving your wife? Is she the, the apple of your eye, so to speak? Do you cherish her? Do you love her? Are you concerned for her spiritual well-being? Just as Christ loves the church and gave himself up for her, that he nourishes and feeds and cherishes her to present her pure and blameless before Christ? Are you doing everything you can to ensure that she is growing in her godliness? And so the exercise of authority is not an abuse of power in a Christian congregation. Uh, husbands are to exercise his husbandry authority out of reverence for Christ in submission to him doing everything he can 
to express his godliness towards her, uh, uh, his, uh, his, his, his wife. Uh, many of you come from Asian backgrounds, uh, so uh, it might be appro- appropriate for me to, to say something about Asian culture. Uh, it is a very hierarchical society, and so uh, in some ways, wives submitting to their husband uh, maybe has been a part of cultural norm. But over the centuries, this cultural norm has produced a byproduct, unnecessary and a tragic uh, byproduct, where husband's authority uh, is abused. Uh, They become really, really abusive of their wives, and uh, they make wives' life so miserable that the only thing that their wives are looking forward to is a day when their husband will, be, will, will pass away. It is a terrible state of, of, of living. We need to change. Listen to what Christ is saying in, 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 in this passage. We are to transform the way we think, the way we relate to one another. This is meant to be a Christian congregation where submission is norm and Exercising authority is done in a loving, considerate, careful way. And so let me urge husbands, men in our congregation, to show leadership and being an example to one another and do everything you can to cherish and love uh, the wife Now, let me just make a couple of things about uh, submission in the parents-children relationship. Notice how this is addressed to children, and the children are those who are to be brought up, right? So I think Paul is talking about uh, children of certain age group. Uh, most of you are children. Uh, you all have parents. And so you might be wondering, well, does that mean that I need to keep listening to my parents? No, I don't think so. Uh, you are... Uh, you are uh, uh, under your parents' guidance and authority as long as you need their guidance. Uh, uh, Parents need to listen to this very carefully because uh, often we think we own our children for the rest of their life and we want to influence them, we want to sort of dictate the way they they, they live. That's not how the, the Bible is talking about. Our job is to make sure that our children grow up so that they can become responsible adults who can make decisions on the basis of what they hear from the Bible. It is terribly important for for parents to train their younger ones to take responsibility in their own life and make godly decisions. When they are able to do so, well, your job as a parent is now, is over. But if you have children who are still under your guidance, children whose uh, whose, whose age is, I don't know, maybe uh, newborn to maybe 15, 16 teenagers, maybe 17, around that age, bra- age bracket, your job is to do everything you can to teach them with the instruction uh, of our Lord. Now, uh, I don't know, I don't think there are people in that age, or maybe there's a couple here, <laughs> Guys, you need to listen to this, right? The call is loud and clear, isn't it? You are to submit to your parents. Why? Because they care for you. Because they worry about your Christian life. Their job is to to be an example to you and to show you how Christian way of life is the best way to live. That's their concern. That's what they pray for. And so trust them and submit to them. Uh, I know sometimes uh, the parents look daggy and, and they sound totally unreasonable and uh, they're really annoying and the only thing that they can think of is, is finding fault uh, in, 
they, they tell you to go and clean your room and they, they tell you to put things away and they can never uh, see the good things that you're doing. I understand all that. But listen to what Paul is saying here. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. You see, if you want to submit to Christ's uh, lordship, if you're professing him to be your Lord and Saviour, then, out of reverence for Christ, submit to your parents. That is a right and proper thing to do. Notice how he goes on to say, for this is right. See, it's, it's a kind of an extra explanation on this, this point, isn't it? And then look at verse 2. Honour your father and mother. This is the first commandment which, with a promise that it may go well with you, that you may live long in the land. Um, listening to your parents, the consequence of that is that you will have a prosperous life. By and large, that is true. When you're uh, in a proper relationship with your parents, parents whose concern is the well-being of their children in a spiritual sense, then you will have a much better life in this world than anybody else. I mean, anecdotally, uh, those who grew up in a Christian environment where parents are doing their job properly, educating them and shaping their, their, their children's way of thinking, they end up making far better decisions in relation to their life. It is true. I see this again and again and again. You know, uh, uh, it is terribly unfortunate when in a kind of uh, pseudo-semi-Christian environment, parents are uh, a kind of uh, Christian only by name, and they bring their children to church, and yet they're not really living a Christian life from day-to-day um, uh, lifestyle. Their children will look at that, and they say, well, Christianity is... It's a little bit like um, uh, joining a chess club. You know, you, you go along when you, when you feel like it and, 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 and you do th- certain things because everybody else is doing certain things and, and sometimes, well, I'm not really convinced by that so I'm going to do, 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 do something else. When you're living in that kind of environment, Christian, Christianity will have no impact in the way you think about the world, about your life and the decision that you make. But you see, godly Christian parents who are putting the gospel before anything else, who are uh, living their life uh, for concern for honour of Christ, they will show you how to live their life in this world. Listen to them. Observe them. Practice what they do. And when you do so, you will have a much better life. Uh, My time is almost up, so let me just conclude. Understand the importance of family life as an arena for godliness. You know, if you want to live your life in submission submission to Christ, you want to see his name honoured and glorified, make sure that your family life is in order. For that is one of the primary uh, places where godliness is practised. It is a wonderful blessing to grow up in a Christian household. It is a great privilege. And so make sure that you, with children, provide that kind of environment where the word of God is, is honoured, it is practised, it is believed, it is obeyed. Let the word of God shape the way you think, the way you conduct your life. And that will bring such a blessing to your family life. And in that kind of setting, practice submitting and is appropriate. Wives, submit to your husband. Husbands, love your wife. Children, obey your parents. Trust them. Listen to them. Observe them. Imitate them. Uh, There's a virtue of practice, friends. Uh, We don't get this right every time, 
Uh, we don't get this overnight. We need to keep practicing it. We need to sort of come back to it. We need to evaluate. We need to see if we can improve on certain things. Uh, I can tell you that my relationship with Jessica has improved over the years and now it is so much more enjoyable, it is so much better than when we first began. Uh, I hope that is the case with my children too, that they enjoy being part of, uh, part of this family where they see their parents uh, living their Christian life day to day. It might be a good thing for you to actually go and ask them. Are your parents really Christians at home? Do they encourage you? Uh, it is a terribly, terribly important thing that we as Christian parents do this as best as we can because it is your responsibility to nurture and to train them in the instruction of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that the gospel reshapes the way we think about the world. Father, we live in a, a rebellious society, a society uh, that uh, always goes against uh, what your word is telling us. And honestly, uh, living in this world as Christians is sometimes very confusing and very difficult. But Father, uh, we thank you for the opportunity for us to gather together to listen to what your word has to say. So please, uh, keep on providing us with such opportunity. And uh, we pray, Father, that your spirit uh, will keep speaking to our hearts and our minds so that we will be transformed into the likeness of our Lord Jesus. Father, we pray that the way we think, the way we see ourselves, the way we relate to each other, will indeed be transformed by the gospel of our Lord Jesus so that we will be different uh, from the world. Father, we thank you for the joy of submission, that um, it is a, a blessing, uh, it is a best way to live, because that's how you made the world. Father, we pray that you would give us such faith uh, to trust uh, the power of your word, and the practice, keep on doing uh, these things in our life so that we will improve the way we submit to one another uh, as appropriate uh, in our relationship. And that we ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.